the Joe Rogan experience. This business has always been weird like that. There's always no. Been that's people. why you're the king, dude. Because you got outside of it, but you're totally in it, and they can't they can't get you. They can't get you. I I, I you know. I'm piling up some stories here. Being in the matrix, I won't get into them, but it's the same. It's just the same old. Corporations only know how to do business one fucking way, and well, it's just they it's, push their advantage. They push their advantage. They have their leverage, and they want the biggest pie, slice of the pie. That's that's what they. Do. I don't have a problem with that. It's when they go beyond that and they just straight up steal. Are they stealing from the, you? Right they, now? Everybody does. Every every time you get in business with like corporate guys, this is how it works. It's like the check. Okay, we're in business to make money from them, and then you get in business with them, and then the check goes to the corporate guy, and then you get your cut off of his checkbook. So right there, I am immediately in a situation where there's no way I can steal from him, but he can rob me fucking blind. Right, and yeah. he can add a bunch of expenses yeah, onto things that... Front-end load yes. expenses to make yes. it look like they're losing money, and yeah. That's to, Hollywood accounting. Yeah. No, yeah. it's stealing. It's stealing is what yes. it is. They just call it Hollywood accounting. Yes. But, it, but it's not Hollywood accounting. It's, it's corporate accounting. It's scumbag accounting. That's just, and it's how they do it. And they sleep at night and then they always ask, oh, that's over in the accounting section of the building. Not over here where me and my yacht are. <laughs> I'm like artist friendly. You know, I majored in fucking liberal arts in college. Well, what was really interesting when podcasts started to take off, they started to try to get in with the old model and weasel into podcasts and, and buy pieces of podcasts. And, like, if you oh, come dude, on your my deal, network... Your deal is going to... is If you think the fucking industry is going to sit back when they didn't get to wet their beak on that thing, I'm going to tell every young comic when we get back to this shit, is what they're going to do now is what the music industry did, where they started, started signing straight across the board deals. They're going to get some young kid who's got no power in the business and it's just like, you know, we'll help you create a podcast, you know, we're signed with so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. And what they're going to do is they're going to own the podcast, the advertising money is going to go to them and they're going to rob them fucking blind. 100%. They're going to 100%, 100%, gonna, going to fucking steal from them, rob them fucking blind. And then when they get audited and they get caught stealing, they're going to label that kid, that young comic, difficult to work with, <laughs> meaning difficult to steal from. That's... It's already happening. Yeah. Uh, I know guys who, young guys, I won't name any names, but they've come up to me and go, hey, um, I'm signed to this management company. They want to sign me, but they want a piece of my podcast. No. They want a piece of this, and they, they want no, it There's in no perpetuity. reason. There's no reason. Yeah. You got to tell people that, dude, because oh, you're them. the You got to tell. Oh, I tell You them. got to tell people. Do I not. Don't give up anything. Don't give up anything. Don't ever. It's all you. It's all Because they're not going to do anything for you. They, they, what they're going to do is move the ball quicker yeah. that first fucking two years, and then the rest is all going to be you. If you just hang in there and, and struggle a little bit, like, uh, uh you got to grind. You just got to hang in there and keep going. I mean, yeah. I, I got a lot of offers to buy half of the podcast or to buy, P and I, nothing. I wouldn't, I won't, I won't do it. I won't, I'll never do it. But then Spotify came along and they said, we'll give you a licensing deal. So just put it on our network for yeah. three months, but you still own it. Right. I'm like, all right, we're in. And that's that's why we did it that way. But this this comic that I won't name, he was telling me that his, this management company, they wanted to sign him. They wanted to own a piece of his podcast forever. And I'm like, and that what that eventually crazy. will become. Yeah, because what they're going to look at it is they're going to make it like if you started a podcast while you were with this yes. manager or while you were with this agent, it'll be like back in the day when you booked a sitcom. Exactly. And then- if you left the agency or the manager throughout the lifetime of that sitcom, you owed the commission to them. Exactly. But back then, that you needed them to do that. You don't need them for the podcast, but they're going to do that. So then you're going to leave this manager, and then for the rest of your fucking life, you're going to be paying this never-ending alimony. Yeah. I mean, there'll be guys eventually, they'll try to take 50, 60, I own your podcast. Uh-huh. Yeah. Managers will start, um, agents will start podcast networks because there's nobody regulating them. To not do that anymore. I got seems. an offer just five years ago from a company that was a radio company that wanted 50% of the podcast. They were going to give me no money. They wanted 50% of the podcast just to be associated with them. And they're like, we're going to pull together all these advertisers and it's going to help your revenue. No. 50%. So no. that, but and they that's never the deliver with what they say they're going to. They and then can't. they come they in can't. and they just, they just, they gut the thing. Well, the th beautiful thing about podcasts is podcasts all get big on word of mouth. Like, I've never advertised this podcast. I never did anything with it. Right. I never bought billboards or put ads up anywhere. It's just from word of mouth. 
And the way other podcasts grow is people get on people's podcasts and they say, hey, you listen to Bill Burr's podcast, Money Morning Podcast, fucking hilarious. And then it just right. grows. But I think from it's the job promoting. of people making money in podcasting to let new podcasters know, do not sign those yes. deals ever. Yes. Do not let the Fox into the hen house because they are going to fucking rob you blind. And they you just, don't need them. And I, I saw this documentary one time on this heavy metal band Anvil. Right, this crazy thing about this band that just was around forever and never quite made it. And there was a, I think it was, I think it was that one. It's one of those ones about an old like metal band from the '80s. And this guy said, like the truest shit ever when he was talking about the music business. And this goes straight across podcasts and everything. He goes, "You're better to own something 100 percent and only sell 20,000 copies than you are to uh, not own it at all and sell 20 million. Like you're literally going to make more if you just sell 20, Isn't 20. That crazy." Yeah, no, they fuck. Cause, and then another thing that they do, oh my God, dude. Another thing that they do is then the, all the people that they lose on, they dump that on you. Yes, yes. Like I remember one time, I forget what it, I, I was uh, with this network and I had a CD that was already made. I already made it and I just wanted them to put it out on their label. And they, and they wanted to own the CD. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not, no, I don't want you to own it. I just need you to, to, to like distribute it. I need you as a distributor. And the guy said to me, he goes, well, you know, ownership shouldn't be that big a deal for you. It should be about exposure. And I said, all right, well, let me ask you this. If ownership shouldn't be that big a deal to me, why is it such a big deal to you? And he started like stammering. And then he basically said, well, you know, we get in business with something. He named a couple of the comics whose CDs didn't sell. And we have to recoup those losses. It's like, that ain't my fault. That's hilarious. I could have told you not to sign that fucking jerk off. What is your... P it's not my fault you didn't do the, the fucking work. So that's the way... I had another one one time I signed with... This is back when I made like CDs and I did one and I had a 60-40. You get... You know, I was getting 60 and they were getting 40. But their 40 was off the gross. Mine was off the net. And all expenses for the album was on me. It's like, I thought we were doing this together. Every fucking thing, the artwork, printing it, all of that, all of those expenses came to me. And in the end, that 60, 40, 60 uh, net, 40 gross, they made way more money than I did. <sighs> it's just how they, and you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm getting $6 on every 10. Yeah, plus the, it, but anything. It's just hilarious that they would come up to you and tell you that we did some deals with some other comics. Dude, I got in business one time to make this TV show and the fucking guy sends this, the, the, the bill for the whole fucking thing. I shouldn't be saying that, but this is a while ago, right? The guy was going to bill us 2500 bucks a month to use his copier machine and another, I don't know, 4500 bucks to use his editing. It's like, dude, we have both of those things. We don't need those. Let's take that money and put it on the screen. We're trying to get this thing to go. And, and the guy, like, he, he, oh, it's the funniest shit ever. He goes, like, I'm insulted by those questions or something like that, which is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> the, the, the offense, like the, uh, what is the, like, the, the, I don't know. You're a fucking thief, and you actually have the audacity <laughs> to be like taken aback, like like fanning yourself. Like I can't believe you'd such a. It's like it's how many fucking shows are you charging twenty five hundred bucks a month to go? You know, fucking use your copy machine. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of money. That's rent for a nice apartment. <laughs> no fucking thieves. <laughs> fucking copy machine. How much does it cost to use that copy machine? Really? First of all, the copy machine probably doesn't even cost twenty five hundred bucks. He's probably renting it. Yeah. Probably but, rents it for a couple hundred bucks a fucking month. But even to buy a copy, he machine. probably has nine shows paying twenty five hundred bucks a month for him to go. Abby, Abby. That's it. If you have like a really big one, one of those commercial grade copy machines, what does it cost? Ten grand? I mean, how much could it cost? I mean, that I I think he's bought a couple of houses off of owning that <laughs> copier machine. And I just I just love telling these fucking stories because these are the things that you like. What, what's great about podcasting is you can say yeah. this. This is for every person out there who yes. has a fucking business and you know there's that thing where you want to take it to the next level and then these these guys come in and then they're all just like yeah well hey we're gonna take a piece of it and they take a big fucking chunk out of it and what they do is their risk is all the way down here yours is up here and then somehow they just i'm telling you like you better you better to sell twenty thousand copies own it 100 percent than 20 million and not own any of it because yeah. you're going to make more money that's just how the game is played and those fucking guys who steal from people they they sleep very comfortably but it's also just podcasts just the stress of dealing with other people's eliminated just the stress of dealing with production people it slows it down it slows oh, it down yeah it slows it's awful. It down it's awful yeah i mean <clears throat> the only thing spot spotify's ever done so far 
is ask, do you know who the first guests will be? And already I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Yeah, like they're gonna be who they're gonna be, you know. They're gonna be great. I'm gonna try to I get call my best that, friends, I call the that, funniest people. That's them justifying their desk. Like I right, can't just right, sit here. Right. Like Joe knows what Any he's idea? doing. Any idea? Well, who's so, uh, gonna be? I'd like to start a uh, email chain, <laughs> and uh, we could maybe circle back later and uh, have a conference call. <laughs> and they're just trying to fill up yes. their yeah. They're just having to use time. Yeah, but the, but the Spotify people have been great. They literally said, "We don't want to do anything. We want you to just do what you're doing." Just do what you're doing. Oh, that's but good. even asking me who the guest's going to be, I was like, oh, no. Please let this be the only question. <laughs> yeah. I'm never available. And that's nothing, though. That's nothing. I mean, they're great. But could you imagine if you were doing that with a network? Like, imagine if you were in business with ABC or something like that, and they were, they were helping produce your podcast. You'd have to go in for meetings. You'd have to go in and sign into the office. Bill, you sign in here. You go and sit down and waste your fucking afternoon having some dopey conversation. You, you, you kind of complain a lot when you read these letters. Bill, um, do you have to when people are signing the emails? Maybe you should be. Can we get happier? a reread on the blah blah blah? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, what do you think? How do you feel about product placement? Because we've got a we've got a great deal with Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to tell a few of those for younger people out there because it actually really bothers me that people do that to people. Yes, It really it bothers me, and I love comics, and I love seeing new comics coming up that have talent, and I hate seeing them get fucked over. So hopefully uh, people listen and they do it, but they're fucking worms, man. They're, they're fucking worms. worms. There's a lot of worms out there, and there's a lot of worms that try to grab comics real that, that are talented but real raw, and they try to lock you up to some enormous lifetime management deal. And, and when you take off and you have something, say if you're... <clears throat> Dude, I remember back in the day when everyone, when, when companies were like shooting specials before comics started shooting them, and the amount of guys that got that, yeah, we only got enough money for, to shoot one, you know, to only, you can only shoot it one time, but you're going to crush it, man. You got this hour down, we only got enough in the budget. And then they'd show up early and they'd be shooting another comic special. Off yes. their money, the deal, to double them as a management company, what they would get, or, or an agency. The amount of fucking times that that happened. With the same audience. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, Do you want yeah. to hear the best one I ever heard? Jim Brewer was filming a special, f sold out this theater, and the, the people that were filming the special told him that the money for the ticket sales was theirs because it was all about the production. Because the money that people were paying for the production. He's like... The fuck are you talking about? This is my audience. Like that's my money. His management tried to steal the money from ticket sales and say that it went towards production. Uh, went all the way to court with it. His manager's on the way to court. Has a fucking panic attack. <laughs> goes to the hospital. Like the whole thing's a nightmare. I think he won. won. Yeah, yeah, of course he won. He won. Yeah, he won. It, well, it's, it's, it's thievery. It's thievery. Like these are tick people are paying to see Dude, Jim I have Brewer. I have a million of those fucking stories. Oh, I have and a lot that of those this too. but this is the thing. This is what kills me about a lot of this this rhetoric that's going on out there, which I agree with ninety percent of it, but if you if you agree with a hundred percent of it, like you and I are not supposed to be having stories like this. We're supposed to be the ones doing it. And it's just like you have what do to you mean? Uh, like as far as the uh the whole you know Oh, you're a white male, heterosexual, you know, doors just fly open and people are like, hey, what are your dreams? They like, I'm not saying, and I'm not obviously not bitching, but I'm just saying that like, like people will fuck you. It's all about money. They it's don't, all about money. they don't give a fuck. And they, and they all, those people that do that shit really. Yeah. So well, there's I, a long I, history of Hollywood accounting. There's a long history of that. I mean, there's been so many stories about people who made killer hit movies and never got paid. Because Hollywood's like, look, you know, we had this much had to go to advertising, and this is the production. Look value. how bad Ooh. Elvis got fucked. Oh, yeah. Oh, Elvis yeah. got fucked so bad, and then one of the main re ways he got fucked on the road, he, he only did one out-of-the-country date, I believe he did Toronto, and he never traveled the world because his manager had something going on with his visa, and he was worried if he left, he wouldn't be able to come back. <laughs> so that kind of, like, fucked Kept him Elvis in out of a ton of fucking money and seeing the world or whatever the yeah. fuck he might have wanted to do. Keep doing these movies, Elvis. You don't want to go on the road. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> well, the, you know, the best version of breaking down how corrupt the music business is was by Courtney Love. 
They said she had a ghostwriter. I don't know, but she did. But it was it's a it's a great article that she wrote documenting exactly how much you get paid versus how much money gets generated and where it all goes and how they fuck you. Yeah. No, it's it's. Uh, They've always done it that way. I mean, that's that's always the way they've done it. They, that's they the take answer. These young people. That's the answer yeah. to it. Is well, I mean, that's how that's <laughs> how it's done. <laughs>